Hello, everybody, and welcome to Tuesday, the 30th of September, I believe. I'm not entirely sure what day it is. Nope, 1st of October. Tuesday, 1st of October. Um, and it's apropos that I'm going to speak to you from Bear Grylls Soul Fuel today about taking time. As you watch this, I am most likely um, driving west across Manitoba and Saskatchewan, heading for Saskatoon for three days of meetings and in the middle of that um, on on Wednesday on Thursday morning at 2 a.m. Saskatchewan time I will be on a zoom call with bishops from around the world preparing for our new bishop school in England in November and I need to learn about taking time so I'm going to share with you this devotion called take time we can go roughly three weeks without food three days without water, and three minutes without oxygen. How long can we live effectively without refueling our faith? Jesus never went long before praying, without praying. There was a time when the crowds were so desperate to get a piece of him that there was no time to eat. People were running toward him, predicting where he might be going next and waiting there. It was the busiest season in his life, but Jesus knew that he needed time alone in prayer, even more so when it was busy. Jesus always seemed to stick to this routine as a clear source of power for the day ahead. Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest, he said. Mark 6, verse 31. Jesus' words to his disciples are also words to us today. That's why I try my best to start every day in a quiet place, getting my soul fuel in, even if for just a few minutes. And you know what? He's always ready and waiting for me, and he's never late. So make that little time and protect it, even if it is with your eyes closed while you're on the train into work. Breathe it in. Know his presence around you. Let his words soak in. Let his strength empower you. Know you are forgiven, healed, restored. Ask for those things afresh and be thankful and pray for the day ahead. Be still and know that he is with you. Psalm 46 verse 10 says, be still and know that I am God. Now we are ready to hit the day. I need to hear that message on a regular basis. I should just put that on my calendar every few weeks to read that devotion. Because I am an absolute believer that we need to take time. Um, I was in a book called um, Hit the Ground Kneeling, which I have here somewhere not sure where, but somewhere on my desk, um, by Archbishop of York, um, Stephen Cottrell, whom we, we met last weekend um, in Winnipeg at a conference. He has a book about leadership called Hit the Ground Kneeling, and it's sort of turning things on its head. He talks about hit the ground kneeling instead of hitting the ground running. Count your chickens before they hatch. They're hatched. State the obvious. Um, let the grass grow under your feet. All these things that talk about being present in this moment, being present to the dreams and the visions that God holds for you. And I don't know about you, but if I'm busy going somewhere else, I'm not thinking about where I am. Um, Cheryl, my executive archdeacon, and I had an example of that. We were driving down the road. We were up north at the, going to the PA. And she kept saying there's like lines of things traveling across the road, like in a line. And I'm like, oh, my heavens, she's nuts. I can't. What's she talking about? You see, she was able to look in front of the car, right in front of where we we're driving. And I, because I was navigating and I was looking at the road, I was looking down the road at where I was going. So by the time I got to that long little, you know, caterpillars or salamanders or whatever it was that was walking in line across the road, I didn't notice them because my eyes were further up ahead. And there's something wrong with that. When you're driving, you don't want to be looking at the, the nose of your car the whole time. But it reminded me of perspective and that sometimes we need to be looking ahead. We need to be driving forward into the future. And sometimes we just need to stop and slow down and see what's right in front of us. We need to take some time. Now, I won't be taking that kind of time as I'm driving to Saskatoon. It's about a six hour drive. What I will be doing, though, is taking that as silent time. Not the whole time. Some of the time I'll have the radio on. Uh, maybe, you know, download a book on my phone that I can listen to. But the truth is that I will be taking some time to simply be in God's presence, 
to see the changing color of the trees. Although in Saskatchewan it's pretty flat, there's not a lot of trees, but there will be in Manitoba, that part of the, tri of the trip. But I will be taking time to listen for God's voice. I'll be taking kind time to pay attention to the world around me. And I know absolutely 100% I know what will happen when I do that. My soul will be fueled up. When I take the time in the morning to pray, to sit in silence, to meditate, to read scripture, my whole day goes better. So why don't I do it every day? Because I'm dense. I, I don't know. I, I don't want to get out of bed earlier. I don't know. But I know that when I take the time to get up 45 minutes or an hour earlier and sit in the dark and watch the sun come up and drink my coffee and pray and meditate and read scripture, I know that the rest of my day goes so much smoother. I know that I'll look up and think, oh, it must be three o'clock and it's only one. I still have all this time left to go to get this good work done because it's a time to start my day fueling the tank. I'm not asking the, my, the car that is my, my soul to run on fumes. I filled it up so I can coast or I can speed up when I need to or I can slow down and I can watch the scenery outside of my life of what's going on. But I know I need to take the time to slow down and just be and allow God to fill up my, my gas tank, to fill up my spiritual gas tank. What do you need in your life? What does it look like for you to have your spiritual gas tank filled up? How do you feel better? How do you recognize the gift that's being given to you of this life in ways that are different for you than in someone else? My way won't be your way ever. It's going to be completely different for each of us. But I encourage you to think today about how is it that you take that time? How is it that you're filled up? that you can do the work you're called to do. Have a great day. God bless. And I will be with you tomorrow for Church at Home with Rachel, if not on Facebook, but at least um, coming out on YouTube. So God bless. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.